Now, would you then uh, like tell us about the different stages uh, of our lives mm -hmm. then, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, biblically from how mm -hmm. we should be mm -hmm. blessed? Right, I'm happy yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, when we look at the Bible and we start in Genesis, we realize that Adam and Eve were blessed right at creation. Now we don't see the stages of blessing in Adam and Eve's lives because they were created as adults. Mm -hmm. And um, God blessed them in Genesis 1:28. God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply. And that's not just about reproduction, that's about um, um, authority, dominion, um, prosperity, multiplication uh, in all spheres of life and prosperity. But that was an adult bl a blessing imparted to God's children as adults. When we read through Genesis, even there we may not see all the stages of blessing because we see blessing being picked up in Abraham. It was lost in Adam and Eve. God restored it in Abraham. And Jesus Christ redeemed the blessing for us. But it is in the life of Jesus, especially, that we get to understand about the stages of blessing. The first stage being at conception. When we're conceived in our mother's womb, that's the point when our spirit is sent from our heavenly place and it's sent to the earth for a particular purpose. And the spirit is asking a question, the eternal part of us is asking a question, am I welcome in this world? Now, when Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb, if you re read in the New Testament, Mary ran off to Elizabeth, and that was where Jesus received his blessing. Well, that was while in the womb, of course. But you see, when Mary received the news or the announcement from the angel that she would conceive and bear forth a child, Mary at that point welcomed the conception. Sometimes as parents, when we get the news of a pregnancy, depending on where we're at, we don't necessarily welcome that conception. And that's where the challenges in a person's life may begin as early as there. In fact, a person could um, feel s signs of rejection at that point if the pregnancy is not received with welcome. So the spirit of a person is asking at that stage, am I welcome on this earth? And Mary welcomed the news of her conception. And that was where even in Jesus, we saw that that message, the question was answered, yes, you are welcome because I've welcomed you in my womb and on the earth. The second stage, the stage of while you're in the womb for the nine months, and that's where Mary went to Elizabeth and Elizabeth pronounced a blessing both over Mary and over the child in her womb. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And the question we're asking in that stage, not intellectually we're asking the question, but our spirit, our heart, our soul, we're asking this question, um, is there a safe place for me on the earth? That's a question we're asking at that stage while we're in the womb for those months. Is there a safe place? And trauma begins in the womb, not after birth. Trauma begins there because depending on the emotional state, we can in fact experience um, conditions that lead to fear setting in. And many times we struggle with fear in our adult years and we're wondering, where did this come from? Where did it start? It actually could have started in the womb where you did not feel st safe because there was an enormous amount of stress that was involved in that environment while you were in the womb. We also notice that there's a third stage um, at birth where we are to be blessed. And the blessing at birth is, is intended to give us a sense that our needs are going to be met because our eternal spirit is asking a question, will my needs be met? A blessing is intended at that stage. In Jesus' life, we know that um, the, 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 the Magi, the, sh the shepherds, the wise men, they, they released a blessing over Jesus. And we in our lives are intended to receive blessing even through um, at our stages of birth, stage of birth and later on now into our childhood years and our, our infancy and childhood years. Jesus received the blessing in his childhood years as well. As they brought him into the temple, Simeon and Anna blessed him. They blessed him, and, and, and at that point, you know, that is where we are expecting through those years to have affirmation, words of affirmation, words of value, words of worth being imparted to us 
primarily by parents because they are God's primary representative in our lives. But if they're not able there to do it, others will come along to do that. And in Jesus' life, we see that others have come along the way to do that. We know that the other stage of blessing is the teenage years. And that is such a critical stage. And the Jews have just, they've mastered this. And we notice at the teenage years, they have the ceremony, the um, bar mitzvah, where the rite of passage from childhood um, into the teen years occurs. And we need a blessing at our teenage years because the question we're asking at that stage is, do I have what it takes? Do I have what it takes to make it in this world, to go on to be an adult? Because the teenage years are meant to be our apprenticeship years as we apprentice to become adults. And many of us have missed that blessing. So we go about wandering and experimenting with life. We just feel that we're not prepared, not ready. At the next stage of life, the adult years, when we are asking, what am I called to do? What is my purpose? And who will share this journey with me? That's the sixth stage at which we intend, God intended for us to be blessed. And we know it's at G in Jesus' life, that's where he started his ministry. As he was baptized by John the Baptist, and the voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the last stage of blessing, the seventh stage, is the senior years. We don't see that in Jesus' life because we know he died and, and crucified at 33, but we see through the Bible that the blessing is intended to be imparted even in our senior years because we're still asking the question, do I have value, do I have purpose? So the point about this, these seven stages, by the way, um, there's a book, Terry Bone and Mel Terry and Melissa Bone have written the book that I mentioned earlier, and that's where the Lord helped me to understand these major stages of blessing and just how we are just so um, confused and we end up with detours when these blessings are not imparted to our lives. And the beauty of it all is that although we have missed it, we are able to speak into a person's eternal soul into the heart where the, the, the questions have been left unanswered and we're able to impart that blessing and help a person to restore what has been missed. It might help for me to describe or to give a definition of the blessing. I, I think that would help our hearers or our viewers as well. Okay. Um, that the blessing, um, it's really the, the speaking of intentional words, words on spoken on behalf of God our Heavenly Father to convey to a person a sense of value, a sense of worth, a sense of dignity, a sense of honor, and a sense of purpose. And words, what, what better way of doing that than words? There are families um, where people will say, well, my mom and dad always did certain things for me. So deeds and acts are also ways that we bless people, but words say so much. And that's why we want to restore in our families a culture of blessing where parents feel comfortable and they, it may be awkward at first, but we are using our words to impart to our children a sense of destiny, a sense of identity, a sense of worth and significance. That's what God intended for the human family. We've missed it. But I thank God for Jesus because in Jesus Christ, everything that we missed and lost in Adam has been redeemed in Jesus, through Jesus. One of my absolute favorite passages in the Bible is in Mark. I think it is Mark chapter 10, where the parents brought the children to mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. And the disciples wanted them to go, away. don't bother the master. Okay. You know, he's busy. But the Bible says that Jesus brought them to himself, took them in his arms, laid his hands upon them, yes. and blessed them. them. That is just absolutely precious. Yes. And he was just showing us at that point what children need most of all. Yes. What they Amen. need most of what all. What they need most of most all. Most of all. Yes. Most of all. Yeah. So thank need. God for the blessing. <laughs>